for a little bit uh, about whether you are actually uh, aware of a call that you might have uh, on your own life and, and what that might look like in terms of uh, meeting needs of your community and so on. Um, I, and I want to look at it uh, through the teaching of a, a guy called George Barner. Uh, I don't know if any of you know the Barner Group in America. They do a lot of research. Um, they, they supported a, a project called You Lost Me, which is just so worth watching. The reasons why uh, under 30s have left the church uh, and what we can do to bring them back. Really good piece of research. But George Barner says, how do we know we are ever called to anything? And he says there are three areas which will help us to discern calling in a very simple way and the first area was passion what is it that really burns in your heart do you have a love for people do you have a yearning to walk alongside people to support people to put your arm around people to share jesus with people what is the passion of your heart um, assuming you've got one but i'm sure we all have a passion and and then he says when that passion is aligned with experience and gifting and they're all pointing in the same direction the direction they're pointing in is where you are being called to. So if your experience, so my experience was in drama, for example, for many years, and my passion was uh, for young people, for the arts, for sharing Jesus, and the experience I had and the passion I had were beginning to align. And then when it came to gifts, some people thought uh, that my gifting was in um, acting and directing and writing. Uh, and those seemed a natural fit with my experience and with my passion. And because those three things aligned and pointed in one direction, I felt clearly called to something. And it was, in this case, chaplaincy through the arts and then eventually with young people in schools. And at some point when we go back into groups in a little while, I'd like you to think about what is my passion? What has been my experience so far and how can I broaden it? And what are the gifts that God has given me that he expects me to then pass on and give to others? So if it's chaplaincy we're talking about, I don't normally like to talk about models of chaplaincy, but I just want to suggest that scripture might suggest that there are four streams that we can look at in regard to chaplaincy and your calling might be to one of these streams or to all of them I don't know uh, and I think when we look at scripture there are there are some very clear uh, things being laid out so Matthew chapter 28 the great commission go into all the world and make disciples I do believe, and some chaplains disagree with this and some people disagree with it, uh, that ch chaplaincy can incorporate evangelism. I think there is an incarnational and invitational way of do doing evangelism that allows for it to be done with integrity within the context of relationship. And that is itself a model. And if any of you know anything about uh, the railway mission, uh, I don't know if you've ever come across it. Uh, they have chaplains on train stations. And those chaplains, if you talk to any of those and to that industrial mission organisation, they are clearly an evangelistic organisation, first and foremost. And the pastoral care and the walking alongside are part and parcel of that incarnation that leads to invitation. Is that an area of chaplaincy you are being called to? Uh, Philippians chapter two, which I'm sure you all know about God, uh, Jesus emptying himself and becoming a servant, I think also represents a model of chaplaincy that we might be being called to. One of the things I, I think is very clear looking at Jesus is his mission 
started with meeting needs. So if you take the story of blind Bartimaeus, Jesus goes up to this one person again. He's in the middle of a crowd. He's going to conduct a mission in Jericho. And everybody is shouting, but one voice captures his attention. And he goes to that one person. And the first thing he says is, what is it that I can do for you? And obviously it's to be made to see and Jesus meets that need. But his mission starts with the question, what can I do for you? And if you look at the Greek of that passage in Luke's gospel, it says Bartimaeus followed Jesus into Jericho. And it's the same construction of words that suggests he became a disciple of Jesus as they went into Jericho. And I think that's really interesting that the mission follows on from the service or is the natural um, outflowing of the service. When I, when I first went to the school to be a community chaplain, uh, I said, what would you like me to do for you? And in my mind, I was hoping they would say, we want you to do collective worship. We want you to teach a hari. We want you to start Christian groups in our school. I wanted to do all of those things. But they actually said, we have a lousy relationship with our local community, with the uh, council estates around us. Um, we've got this terrible reputation. We want you to repair the damage done between school and community. We want you to be the bridge between us. And in 17 years, um, that's what I did really, uh, tried to repair those bridges and gradually as I created uh, a firm bridge people from the community came into school church came into school all the churches holiday clubs in the summer happened in the school premises rather than the church premises uh, all the civic services uh, happened in the school rather than the church uh, and it was an amazing thing but I never once took a collective worship act of collective worship in 17 years I never once uh, taught an RE lesson in 17 years and all my hopes and dreams and objectives were not met, but I did meet the needs and objectives of the school because I adopted a servant uh, model of chaplaincy. And some of you may think, I don't want that. I have, um, I have mission objectives and I have a vision and that's what I want to see happen. But this is a model of chaplaincy that is um, commonly found throughout the UK. The third bit I call the expert model of chaplaincy, and it fits in a lot with what Matt Rogers was saying and others. What are your gifts? Romans chapter 12. Uh, it's a lovely chapter where Paul is talking to the people in the church there and he's saying, if you are a giver, then give. If you are an encourager, then encourage. If you are a listener, then listen. And Paul is saying, God has given you these gifts. Use them. And so... Uh, in the school that I was, uh, we actually um, expanded our chaplaincy team. Somebody came to me and said, I'm a trained counsellor. Can you use me as part of your chaplaincy team? Talk to the head teacher. They said, absolutely, we need a trained counsellor. Somebody else came and they said, actually, I'm a dance coach. Can you use me? And the head said, we don't need a dance coach at the moment. We've got GCSE dance teacher we've got this person that person so we don't need that expertise at the moment but if you have a gift use it and see what God can do with what you have and then the final model which I think is the one I've alluded to most throughout the day is the model of an accompanier and, and you will know as well as I do that um, this is a model seen throughout the Holy Scripture so when Jesus in John's Gospel promised is the Holy Spirit. He talks about in the Greek the paraclete, which is the one who comes alongside. It's often translated as the encourager or the comforter, but it's the one who walks alongside. And it's a ministry there. And if you look at Genesis at the very start of the Bible, we see God, the Father, walking alongside Adam in the garden. If we look at Jesus in the Gospels, he's the one who walks alongside Jairus. He's the one who walks on the Emmaus Road alongside those people who are filled with doubt and worry and concern about what's just happened. 
happened in Jerusalem. And when I speak to schools, particularly in FE colleges, and say, what is it you most want from chaplains at this moment? They say, we want someone to journey with our young people alongside of them through their issues of well-being and mental health and, and all the rest of it. And I, I think as a model of chaplaincy, the accompanying model is a Trinitarian model, because as I say, God the Father did it in Genesis, the Holy Spirit is the one who comes alongside, and Jesus' life was a model of accompanying. And when we are chaplains who accompany, we are working in a Trinitarian way that is reflecting the whole character of God, and I think that is really exciting. So in this pandemic, and there will be people here who work in schools who will be able to uh, say yes to this, lots of schools have said to me, what can you do about well-being? Who is there in your churches who can offer their expertise to come and walk alongside? And actually, I've, I've struggled to find people in my area. But what I have done is I am forming partnerships now with an organisation called Renew Wellbeing. I don't know if you've come across them. You come out, to, out of the Baptist Union and they um, operate through wellbeing cafes that allow people to relate, share uh, uh, and all the rest of it. And so beginning to develop this cafe mentality in schools, colleges and universities led by chaplains that allows the needs of the school, the servant, uh, the expertise of the chaplain and the others, the expert to accompany young people on their journey. And as they do that, the opportunity for imitation comes along. I think these four models, although I've separated them, they actually all work together beautifully. So when I asked, are you being called? You might have felt a tug towards one of these four areas. Yes, I am the more servant type. Or yes, I have this great gift I'd love to share. Or yes, I have a passion to walk alongside people in their grief, in their old age, in their youth, or whatever it happens to be. So I really would love, because we're coming close to the end of our time now, I'd really love you to begin to reflect and think about this. And I've got loads of material I'll put in the follow-up material to, to expand on this. But I'd like, Tim, if we could go back into groups and give people the upper opportunity just to begin to say what is on their heart. I am feeling that perhaps this is something I want our church to do, I want to do myself, I'm feeling called into. And as you're having that discussion, what is it you will need in order to be able to fulfill that call? Do you need more training? Do you need networks of support? How can the Diocese of Norwich facilitate you becoming the person you're being called to be? That's the sort of thing. We've only got about seven or eight minutes that we could do that. Is that okay, Tim, if we go back into groups? Sure. Same, same as usual. Just click the link, you know, and uh, yeah, thanks for that, Nigel. That's really, really helpful. So, uh, yeah, join those groups now. They should be open. Yep. Yeah, off you go. Is a, it's a good question. Um, I, I was saying in the in the break, I've never worn a uniform in my life. I'm not uh, an ordained minister, <clears throat> though uh, I have trained theologically and all the rest of it. Uh, I did always wear in my school uh, a lanyard with a badge that said community chaplain on. Uh, it was a really good introduction uh, for the various students I'd meet, they'd say, oh, what does that mean? What's, what's a community chaplain? What's, what's that all about? Uh, and that was quite useful as a way of visibility. Uh, when I've worked with city centre teams, the visibility is achieved there by two or three things. One I've worked with in Leicester is, a, is one of them. Um, a uniform, usually a t-shirt, sometimes a hoodie. Uh, in Leicester, they had a um, sofa on wheels, which had on the back of it a banner, which said, this is the chaplaincy and pull up a screen and all the rest of it. Uh, 
But actually, visibility was best um, achieved, I think, in it, for me, was when I was presented to the audience. So when I was appointed at school, the head teacher said, um, almost quoting Jesus in a sense, behold the man, um, here is the chaplain. Uh, take note, this is who he is. This is where he'll be. These are the times he will be available. Uh, and when we expanded our chaplaincy team uh, and brought in new people, we always did that. And then um, Nuneaton FE College, uh, which is a really good example of FE chaplaincy, uh, they managed to get into the prospectus, uh, they're on the website of the organization and all of those sort of things. Uh, not only brought credibility to the role, saying this is endorsed by the organization, but also uh, raise the profile of the chaplain in that case. Uh, yeah, so that, that's what I've, my thoughts on visibility really. Thanks Nigel. Uh, also, there was a, a question around um, how, how to find people in the sense of like, if our, uh, you know, the, what the pandemic has shown is obviously lots of people had to move online, lots of people have to do home working, and it, and it looks like that, that kind of dynamic might stay in place for a while. So for us who maybe want to try and connect with people who, are, who, who used to be in a workplace or used to be, you know, in the, the, the kind of t city centres, town centres, wherever people would gather, and now at home, have you got any tips on how we how we can get and uh, connect with those people who, who are now maybe could potentially be a bit isolated or a bit set, set apart? How do we make those uh, connections? Um, that's quite difficult. I don't really have a full answer to that because uh, it's not an area I've been particularly working in, except with schools where the chaplaincy that I have been engaged with, the school has made the chaplain available through the school website and students can email chaplaincy at uh, Redmore College uh, and so on. Um, assemblies and things, uh, I'm linked to Loughborough Grammar School. Uh, all of that has been done through the website. What, what I found with those organizations which have been trying to connect with home workers is it's all about the place you are placed. So Marks and Spencers, bless them, uh, for their chaplains, they have uh, said to all their workers, the chaplain can be available through a sort of chat to the chaplain type approach that we heard about from the mission to seafarers. And they have made that abundantly clear that here is the chaplain. They are still there and they're still there for you. But not everybody has done that. Um, so, yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. For those schools, I, I know a lot of chaplains have spent time um, on school gates, uh, in the open air organizing events that people can come to and make connection with, walks in the park. Uh, chaplaincy has gone into gardens, which I found very helpful. Uh, local chaplains have advertised through various, um, the local town center media and whatever Facebook pages. Uh, the chaplaincy is open with picnics in the gardens, things like that. Uh, but those are just little examples of things I've seen. I haven't got a great strategic answer to that. Those are just uh, ones I've seen where they've worked well. And I think, you know, you, one of the, the, the things that you mentioned at the beginning was about that hanging around. You, you mentioned the guy who hung around, felt like he was just hanging around in hospital. I guess in the same way, you know, even people who do home working, they hang around, whether it's online or, uh, um, you know, or, or, or other places, you know, even in, you know, if it's just going out for a walk, there is a bit of hanging around. One thing uh, I've seen people is if you create something, a physical thing in your community that's outside, uh, that kind of draws people's attention because kind of being around whether it's a hope tree or a prayer grow pr prayer space or whatever it is to kind of gather people around or you know uh, but online as well if you know there's local uh, networks where people hang around whether it's social media or, or whatever it is just kind of hanging around being in that place obviously it's a very different sense of being face to face with people uh, but uh, kind of uh, but that's also where you can just start to connect with people start to hear some of the stories what's going on being available, uh, that type of thing. Um, which I, I, I just thought of one really, one of my favorite examples as a, a chaplain to a primary school that I know called Linda in Leicester. Uh, and she wasn't able to go into the school, but she lived on the road that parents passed. So in her front garden, 
every day she would put a group of teddy bears in a different sort of setting. They were having tea together or they were doing something really exciting or they were dressing up and there would be a board saying, this is what our teddies are doing today. And here's my number and here's a way you can get in touch. And parents would come and they would look and they would chat and, and Linda would be there. And that has been a sensational uh, connection that has gone beyond the school to everybody who passed up and down that road. And she became, in inverted commas, chaplain to her street as much as she was chaplain to the primary school. Uh, just a bit of innovation, really, that I was, I had to applaud, really. Um, what about, uh, Nigel, for those of you, if those of us have never even considered doing chaplains before, want to start something, whatever their community is, whether it's their local community or a workplace or whatever, what are some absolute basics just to kind of get the ball rolling? Uh, you know, have you got any advice on that? Uh, yes, I will be sending out to you this document uh, in a PDF form. This is uh, called Working Standards for Chaplains, uh, which I've been involved in writing. Um, and that lays out some of, some of the principles of starting. One of the key things for me is recognizing your calling personally, but also being recognized by your church or the sending body so that you are sent by those people and that basis yes god has placed this call yes that call has been recognized by those around me gives you the confidence to then approach uh, those areas so what i would say is what are the needs in my community so i live in a place called ashby de la zouche and i've uh, tried to persuade our church to become a chaplaincy to our town and we said what are the needs in this community there are needs uh, with uh, in the old people's homes uh, there are needs in the local school and there are needs here and once we've identified those needs and we've got this sending, we have approached the places where we think there is a need. And we have said, here we are. We're being sent to you for you to use. Can we help? Uh, and we, we present portfolios of what the chaplains are qualified in how they've been trained, what they have to offer, what their areas of expertise. Um, the fact that it's going to cost nothing is a big deal or cost something in certain circumstances. Uh, um, and we, we create a, a chaplaincy portfolio that you can offer to people. I think there's, you know, that for some people out there, maybe there's a big, there's a, something big that's brewing. Maybe thinking, here's a new program or project that, can, that, that we could start. How are we going to do it? But I think for others, it's just a bit like, well, I've, I know my, my village or I know my street or I know my little work group. And how can I just be that presence of Jesus in that place? And, and of course, you know, there's a structural side of things. You need to get the structure right. I think that's where the accountability, you know, if obviously you have to think about safeguard and things like that, if you work. You know, so being part of a structure, but also, of course, the most obvious thing is the relation, relationality. I've got to have, there's no point having all the structure and not knowing anybody, not get, you know, so you need both those things. So I think sometimes we can feel a bit like overwhelmed or stifled thinking, oh no, there's just too much to think about. But actually, I think the part of that kind of beginning is the listening. What's God doing in you, working out your passion, you know, your, uh, your, 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 what's you know, the things that I mentioned earlier, experience and gifts. Uh, also, who have you got? Who do you know? Is there someone who could do it with you? Is there somebody who feels the same way as you? Find those people. Obviously, pray, 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 uh, and be, and just see what's bubbling out. It's because it's not about just I'm going to do something. You're trying to listen to God, aren't you? Listen to your community, your context, the people, thinking what what could we do here? Uh, and I think in the midst of all that, through uh, wisdom and a bit of insight and a bit of a uh, uh, trying to work it out you you can get somewhere but don't be off put start small you know I started a, a, a chaplaincy in a shopping center just because I go there to shop and I, and and I thought all these people and they're not coming to it how can I how can I be there and it just started small you know uh, so there are lots in the chat you may notice lots of people putting amazing resources on there I'm going to try and capture that as well and send that out when we do so there's like books websites there are lots of organisations that have been doing chaplaincy for a long time where you can get information as well. So I'll, I'll try and capture that as well, uh, which uh, obviously there are questions about training. 
you know obviously you can be a full-time you can do a degree on chaplaincy if you want to uh, yeah, if that's the way you're inclined but i don't want any of you to feel put off if you think oh there's something growing in me and i think i could do something uh, then you know <laughs> then go with that you know you maybe you'll end up full-time maybe you'll end up with a degree maybe you'll end up with all this other stuff or maybe you won't it doesn't matter but what's the most important thing listen to god be faithful to god stay connected uh, uh and and see what happens that's the excitement isn't it the the uh the adventure of faith wherever you are so i i, I hope what we've some of the stuff we've heard today uh, we'll just start to bubble in you. Find other people to share it with. Tell someone after you after this year. If you just think maybe, tell someone there, and maybe they'll go. Me too. <laughs> and that's the beginning, isn't it? So I just want to say, look, thank you to Nigel today. It's just a wealth of experience. Like I said, it's going to. These things are recorded. The videos you showed me, you'll be able to access them later. He's going to have a resource sheet with you. We'll share the slides. I'll capture the chat, you know, you can contact Nigel, you know, if you've got further questions, if you're in uh, the Diocese of Norwich in Norfolk and you think I'd like to go further with this, then talk to me and we'll see what we get going. Uh, it's, you know, it's all ad hoc at the moment, <laughs> but we'd love to kind of have a longer conversation with you and see how the mission enablers in Norwich can support you wherever you are and getting something going to see the kingdom of God bursting out wherever you are it's exciting i'm excited you may have gathered that so i'm going to finish and i'm going to pray for us thank you so much for being patient with my my, my technical abilities just want to say thank you nigel for just you've been brilliant uh just loads of food for thought and uh you know you've been there you've done that and you've shown it can happen and i, I don't know, like most of the people that i felt really moved by that little video you put, what a good, amazing story about that good Samaritan. Perfect. It's perfect. Thank you so much. So uh, uh, just let me pray for us. Remember, stay in touch. I will send an email out and, uh, and we'll go from there. But bless you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you. May you know his peace and may he take you to places you never expected, people you never expected to be with. And, and stretch you in so many ways that when you look in the mirror, you don't recognize yourself anymore. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 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 Bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Go and enjoy. And uh, thank you, everybody. Stay in touch and we'll uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.